Apple just released the second developer beta of iOS 18.2, and there are a lot of changes to talk about. Plus, we may even know the release date. Let's jump into it. Real quick, if you're interested in keeping up to date with all the latest gadgets and Apple news, consider hitting that subscribe button. So, I've got my iPhone 16 Pro here, and I just finished downloading the second beta of iOS 18.2. It's still only a developer beta and not released to the general public. My update weighed in at just under two gigs. The version number is 22C5125E. As we get closer to release, that final letter will get closer to A, representing the stability. We're pretty early in the process here, but we may have a target window for the release, and I'll fill you in on that towards the end. The first beta of iOS 18.2 contains some huge features, ones I know many of you have been waiting for. If you want to learn more in depth about it, check out the video I've linked here. The big three changes, though, are ChatGPT integration with Siri, Image Playground, and Genmoji. I've been using these for the past couple weeks, and for me, Genmoji and ChatGPT have been big ones. Siri is much more helpful now when I ask questions. If she doesn't know, she can just ask ChatGPT to figure it out. It's natural and easy and so seamlessly integrated. Genmoji, I've also turned to quite a bit. There are those times when an emoji would absolutely help a conversation. Sometimes there are odd limitations though. Like I really wanted a pumpkin trebuchet, but it couldn't do that. A pumpkin catapult though, that was doable. I'm curious how you guys have found these. Have you tried Genmoji yet or Image Playground? Let me know in the comments and what are the best images or Genmoji that you've come up with? I assume Apple has continued to refine all these here in the second beta, even if we aren't seeing anything really visually changed. I did see a splash screen for a Genmoji though. This update doesn't contain just these Apple intelligence features, which is why beta 2 is available for all devices now, not just those compatible with Apple intelligence, unlike with beta 1. We even saw that the redesigned mail app will come to everybody and not just those that have Apple intelligence. I did spot one change for ChatGPT though. Inside of the ChatGPT settings under Apple Intelligence, there's an indicator of where you are for advanced features. So you have a daily allowance for those. There's also an option to upgrade directly to that paid version. Backing up, you may have noticed these new icons. There are now dark icons when you have the dark home screen icon set. If you move it to dark mode entirely, they get these little gray borders around them. I'm not sure quite how I feel about those yet. The camera control has gotten tweaked again. It can lock the exposure or focus, and then you can adjust the double click speed. You can go default, slow, or slower inside of the accessibility settings. Personally, the exposure lock is probably going to be where I set mine to most of the time. You take like a light press there and it locks the exposure for you. So you can point the camera in one spot, lock that in, with that light press, then turn the camera to another place and it won't instantly lighten or darken until you release that button. Basically like a dedicated mirrorless or DSLR camera. The next change is huge for AirTags and other Find My enabled devices. You'll now be able to share them with a trusted person or even an airline. Say you took your charger with you, like this plug bug that has Find My built in, and you leave it behind on a plane or somewhere else. The idea is, if you lose it somewhere, you can share the item's location with someone else so that they can help find it for you. As Snazzy Labs says though, that kind of assumes airlines care a bit about finding your stuff. Historically, I'd go ahead and say no, they do not. This all kind of replaces the Marcus Lost feature they had before. It still gives you the way to add your contact information to your lost item for a finder to help get in touch. If you're a Utah resident and 17 or under, you'll be opted into web restrictions, which filter adult content by default now. A couple other things to mention, the mail app has new badging options. There is a new create image button inside of the notes app. You can use your iPhone as a hotspot while mirroring it. Both of those can happen at the same time. And there are new shortcuts available for the fitness app. Best of all though, Apple says they have fixed battery drain issues and device temperature issues. No word on what devices are supported there that it actually fixed those on, but still a huge deal regardless. This update also launched with Apple's other operating systems, including Vision OS 2.2 for Vision Pro. I know some of you probably don't care about that, but it contains my biggest feature request that I've been waiting for, but I'm gonna save that for a whole other video. So when will we see iOS 18.2? It's a great question. 
the usual window would be middle of December. But according to Mark Gurman, things are moving along and Apple actually plans to release it early, possibly as early as the first week of December. Stay tuned to the channel and I'll update you as we know more. Otherwise, be sure you guys are subscribed and I'll catch you in the next video.